With the NEBOSH Open Book exam, you can and should leverage the fact that you have got access to the internet, your textbooks, your own notes, basically an abundance of information that you can use to structure your answers to the questions. But this can lead to a situation where you find yourself drowning in information it's it can become almost overwhelming because i don't know if you can identify with this but you can have god knows how many browser tabs open uh you've got your textbooks and notes strewn over your desk you've got pdfs open on your computer as well and it can lead to a feeling of being sort of stressed out and overwhelmed by just the sheer amount of information that you've got sort of coming at you. So what I want to do is go over a couple of things that you can do, a couple of methods that you can implement to help you to calm that down a little bit. And the objective here is to help you quickly and efficiently get straight to the information that you need and you're going to be able to directly apply it to the question that you're working on. Now I will, I will stress that these methods are not supposed to be taken as an excuse to not become very very familiar with the course syllabus. That's a key thing that you need to put some work in um, and be very, very familiar with the course syllabus and, and the structure of the course and of course the content of it. But let me go through a couple of techniques. So the first one, this one really applies if you're doing uh, an online course, is to use the search function within the online course platform that you happen to be working on. Let me demonstrate this to you using our own Stockwell Safety's own online learning platform. Uh, what I want to do is just let, let's look at a question, justifying health and safety improvements, let's say. I won't go over the scenario, I just want to quickly get to the, um, the question. So what financial arguments could you use to justify your proposed recommendations to segregate forklift trucks? and the workers obviously what we're dealing with here is financial arguments so what you can do is use keywords so in this case it would be financial arguments copy the keywords financial arguments and then click to the main page and then you, there's a search function here which if you click on that Put in your keywords, press the search button, and what you'll have is a list of resources, information within the course that you're assigned onto that discuss financial arguments. Another one involves using, again, keywords. The way to do this, and again, what I'll do is I'll, I'll use a question to demonstrate this say we've got uh, managing contractors when selecting external contractors what would you consider when assessing their competence keywords here i would say are external contractors copy that go open up an internet browser paste it in but then follow it with the initials h s e for health and safety executive and that will bring up when you hit enter, you've got search results that, that are from the HSE's own website. Now, when it comes to external sources of information, my advice is to stick to the HSE website. That website really should provide everything 
that you'll need. I've got nothing against other websites, obviously. There's uh, lots of very good sources of external information out there. But I think with the HSE website, the way, it, the way that the type of information that you'll find on there is exactly the type of information that will help you apply the content to NIBOSH exam questions. Uh, you don't need to go necessarily all around the houses looking at all sorts of different websites. Now, when it comes to the HSC information, what I recommend is go into one of their uh, publications. They produce a lot of information free of charge on PDFs and the, there are codes to this information. So you'll see here, for example, the first result that has come up is a, is a PDF. You'll see that here. This is how Google um, presents the results on the, uh, on the results page. Using contractors, a brief guide. INDG, and then there's a reference number. So INDG is a group of guidance documents that are published by the HSE. The INDG stands for Industry Guidance. There are, there's also another set of um, PDFs that have got the uh, abbreviation HSG followed by uh, a reference number. That stands for Health and Safety Guidance. And there's another one that has got the initial L in, and then there's a reference number that is legal. The L stands for legal. So for example, L5 is the reference number for um, COSH, Control of Substances, Hazardous to Health. And what it will contain, if it's got the L, if it's, one of, if it's from the L um, family of PDFs, is it will contain the legislation. It may contain the approved code of practice to that legislation. And also it may contain guidance as well. So the way that the L documents uh, are formatted is the legislation will be in italics. The approved code of practice will be in the font will be in bold. And then the guidance, if there is any, will be in normal font. Now, I don't recommend making too much use of these. They're very, they can be very unwieldy. There's a lot of information in there, obviously with the legal stuff, because it's got the legislation in there. It'll be um, full of that sort of daft legalese language, um, not really usable in a lot of situations uh, as it relates to NIBOSH exams. They're very dense, unwieldy. You'll be, again, you'll be in this situation where you're just drowning um, it, with, in too much information. The same thing goes, I think, for the HSG documents as well, although they can be, they're a little bit easier to work with than the L documents. The HSG documents, though, can also be quite large documents. You're usually talking, you know, a hundred page PDFs when you're dealing with a, an HSG document. Again, you might uh, find it very difficult to wade through that and, and find the information that you're looking for. Although I will, in a, few, in a couple of minutes, I'll talk about a technique that will help you quickly get to the information, even within a dense document like a, a health and safety guidance document. What I recommend are looking at the INDG PDFs. If there's one available for the search query that you've put in, and there is one available here, which I'm gonna go through in a second, the INDG series of PDFs are usually much easier to work with. They're not very long. They're usually, most of them are less than 10 pages long. They give you, what I have found, is they give you just the right amount of information. Not too much, not too little you'll usually find what you're looking for within an INDG document without getting that 
feeling of information overwhelm. So let's have a look at this document because there's one available for using contractors. Obviously, just a reminder, we've put in the keywords external contractors because that's what the question was about. We followed it with the uh, abbreviation for the health and safety executive. As luck would have it, there is an INDG document available. Let's open that up. And as you can see here, it's uh, seven pages long, using contractors, a brief guide. Already, this sounds like exactly what we need to be able to answer this question. Let's remind us ourselves of the question. When selecting the external contractors, what would you consider when assessing their competence? We've got a document here to help us. And again, rather than read laboriously through the document, you can use Another search, search function, this is uh, what I do when I'm searching documents or websites or whatever, or the internet in general, is pre put your finger down on the control key on your keyboard and then press the letter F and a search dialog box comes up here. And then start putting in some, what you know, uh, typing in a word that you wanna look for. Obviously what we're looking for is how to select contractors so put in selecting contractors and what you might find is as you're putting in the letters it's found one of five instances where sel um, is found if we finish off the word select there's one of one instance you can see it highlighted here select a suitable contractor and now what we've got we've honed in right on the information that is going to be absolutely so usable when it comes to answering this question. When selecting the external contractors, what would you consider when assessing their competence? And look what we've got. You know, I know I've been talking about it at length here, so it's taken a bit longer, but you could get, using the technique I've just outlined, you could get to this information literally within seconds. Um, selecting a suitable contractor and you've got examples of questions you could ask potential contractors you know what arrangements will you have for managing the work will you be using subcontractors recent health and safety performance etc etc and what I want to do is just demonstrate how relevant that information is by looking at the examiner's feedback that was provided each of the tasks and questions in the open book assessment naturally flow on from the previous one to help the learners to progress through the assessment. This question signposts the learner to the selection of external contractors and in particular the information they would, they would need to have confidence in the competency of the contractors. This means considering a wide range of issues from previous experience, insurance, qualifications, etc. And then a couple of examples of good responses, insurance, to check the contractor is adequately insured for the work and going back to the guidance that I've signed uh, I've directed you towards you can see that insurance where is it there we go if required do you have employers liability compulsory insurance so if you would have been using this piece of information in order to answer this question you know, you would have been given relevant information. You'd have found the relevant information. You would have gained marks. Accident records, again, if you would have gone to this piece of information, you know, what is your recent health and safety performance? How many accidents and cases of ill health have you had? Has the HSE taken any uh, action against you? This is all relevant stuff. Um, HSE notices are mentioned in the examiner's feedback. To get to this information, all we really did was, from the question, pick out some key words, external contractors. We've put it into um, an internet browser. We followed it with HSE. An INDG document was number one in the search results. And we know we're on the right track. We've selected it. We've gone into the document. We've pressed Control and F. 
we've started writing selecting contract but we didn't even have to write the entire search term because we could see that as soon as we started putting it in the uh, the power of this search function took us straight to the information that we needed we didn't have to wade laboriously through a dense and complicated um, document we didn't have to go on uh, down the rabbit hole clicking link after link after link on website after website trying to find some information that we could use to answer the question we got straight where we wanted to uh, where we needed to be with just a couple of keystrokes and the knowledge of how these how the HSE presents their information I'll just recap on that what you want what you're on the lookout for is I don't recommend going on the HSE website uh, directly because again what what you might find is that uh, you, you're on a, a link clicking you, you, you're going to fall down a link clicking rabbit hole and you'll get lost in information overwhelm look for these the INDG guidance documents industry guidance documents I'm not saying don't use the um, HSG guidance documents but be aware that if you are going to click on a PDF of a, an, an HSG guidance documents rather than an INDG uh, industry guidance document is that with an HSG document you're going to be dealing with a very long document but you can do that search function within that document just like I've shown you um, with the INDG, the, the, the INDG document but the uh, the difference is that if you're going to put in if you if we because there is a there, there is an HSG if I put in contractors HSG what we'll find is that there is an HSG document health and safety and construction if we go to that okay look what we've got here that this is one page one out of a document that's 141 pages long okay now if we go control and F and we put select into this document look at what you've got now you've got 37 instances where you know you're gonna have to you, you you're you're eating into your time now trying to find what you're looking for you know it the documents too big really to work with um, so it's selecting the safe me safe safest means of access uh, that's not what we want selecting the safe system of work at heights not what we want we want selecting external contractors so, but we can't find can't find the information um, this is where overwhelm comes into it it's getting a little bit stressful so I'm not saying that these HSG documents are not useful they can be just be conscious of the fact that they are they are big documents whereas what I want what I think is better a brief guide using contractors bang you're there you're right into a brief document that's going to take you right to um, the uh, the information that you need without it being stressful or overwhelming hope that's been useful if you've got your exam coming up best of luck with it I hope you've got some value out of the video that you've just seen if so, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel so that you can be alerted to when we produce and upload more videos.